Let's take a step back today and think about the global state of full self-driving. We're going to briefly examine what Tesla and Volkswagen and Baidu and Pony are doing around the globe for full self-driving. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, a little bit of a warning. My neighbor is having some trees removed. I'm hoping to get this filmed early enough that that's not going to happen. But if you hear some loud noises in the background, that's what's going on. It's not like the house is falling down around me. Just fair warning. All right, so like I said, I wanna look at Tesla and also Volkswagen and also Baidu and Pony, a collaboration between them. That sort of spans the globe, right? We're going from Western United States to the middle of Europe, all the way over to China. So let's start with Tesla. The big news in Tesla is that there really hasn't been much news lately. I think they miss Andre. Andre, you gotta come back and start working at Tesla again because clearly they haven't been doing beta updates since you left, so I, I think they miss you. Anyway, seriously, I know Andre works in research and stuff and that the development team is totally separate. An interesting little coincidence. But what this really does tell me is one of two things. Either they're completely stuck and they're like, oh gosh, we don't know what we're gonna do next, which I really doubt is happening, or they are working on the rollout of the next major version, which is the single stack to rule them all, which has been called version 11. Who knows what it'll actually be called when it's released, but probably it's gonna be version 11 when it's released. Uh, given that we're at 10.11.2, it seems pretty reasonable that version 11 would be coming out soon. And I know they've been testing it since I think like August of last year. It's been tested a lot. And the big reason why is because they're moving the highway stack from the old version to the new version. And I think they're putting in parking lots as well. I'm not absolutely positive about that. So anyway, when we get this update, it will be a really, really big update. And that's going to be the major data point in my mind of whether we're going to be looking at full self-driving autonomy achieved by the end of this year or whether we're still quite a ways away. And by the way, if you haven't caught my last video, definitely check it out. It's about what could happen when full self-driving is actually around, whether Tesla or somebody else solves it first. What could actually happen in terms of societal friction to outright rebellion that could actually happen based on the fact that this is such disruptive technology that it's going to displace and upset a lot of people in the process. But anyway, that's for the last video. Today I want to talk about what the state of the art is instead. So anyway, the latest news out of Tesla is, no news is, I guess, good news? I don't know. No news is no news at this point. Of course, this video could be completely out of date by the time I edit it and release it, which will take somewhere around 24 hours, because Tesla could release the next beta update of the software overnight, and I could be like, whoops. <laughs> Anyway, but my expectation is that they think that because they've been delaying so long, they are working on this really, really big rev, and they want to make sure that they get it really good before they go ahead and release it. All right, from Fremont, let's move to Wolfsburg, Germany, and let's look at VW and what they've got going on. I'm going to read from an article. It's translated into English, of course, from German, so it's a little awkward in places. Obviously, I will leave the link to this and also the later CNN article in the description so you can check them out yourselves. So reading from deractionaire.de, the software for your own car operating system and automated driving should be ready by 2025. However, the basic software would have to be ready this year which VW is still a long way from achieving, explains Jan Becker, head of Apex AI, to the Handelsblatt. Another insider told the magazine that VW's software plan looks overambitious and the software unit looks overwhelmed. So briefly, that first paragraph means that in order for VW to get their software online and working by 2025, it has to be done by the end of 2022 because there's a whole bunch of steps of quality assurance and other kinds of testing to make sure that it's actually safe, right? So they need the, the sort of minimum viable product, the MVP needs to be done by the end of 2022 to achieve this milestone. That is a pretty aggressive timeline and reading on it, it just gets worse. So then we talk about staff departures. Accordingly, many of the 5,000 employees are dissatisfied and want to leave the company. And by the by, I've never worked on anything close to this large, but I guarantee you that 5,000 people working on a project like this is not the most efficient thing to do. What you really want is like 100 or less 
extremely top-notch engineers working on the project. They can be agile, they can move around. 5,000 people with the committee meetings and the hierarchy involved in the decision-making process, everything's gonna be delayed. Mars Embassy actually quipped on Discord last night. He said, you're gonna spend 99% of your time just trying to figure out what the hell everybody else is doing at that point, right? It's, you know, software projects of this size are just monolithic and they're huge. They do not move fast. And trying to get something like this you know, to an MVP state by the end of 22 and out the door by 2025 to actually be placed in cars. This is more than just the full self-driving. This is like everything. This is like the operating system for the whole car and everything. So they're trying to move away from third parties doing all of this for them and take it in-house, which is a really laudable goal. But it sounds like they're going about this about as, you know, kind of old school way as possible and trying to be agile and do this quickly. It's probably not gonna work out for them. Anyway, continuing on. There are departures both top and lower levels. Quote, we can hardly save ourselves from applications from the Karyad, reveals the boss of a German software house to the Handelsblatt. And Karyad, by the way, is the software platform that Volkswagen is actually putting out the Volkswagen Group. They're gonna use it for Porsche and Audi and all of their cars, that's the plan, along with the Trinity platform for hardware. Again, continuing on, talking about too many stakeholders in this project. The numerous brands in the group, each with their own developers and plans, also cause problems problems. For example, Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom met his Apple counterpart Tim Cook last year to find out about their software. The VW brands do not have a uniform chip supplier for the hardware either. However, the software can only work optimally if a uniform chipset is used. So again, this is a really big problem. Uh, Tesla is very agile about swapping in chips and swapping out chips, but they do have a basic platform. Their hardware board has not actually changed between the Model 3 and the Model Y and now the new Model S Plaid. So so their, their main sort of motherboard for their, for their cars has remained remarkably similar, even though they swap out individual chips. The sort of platform that they're building on is really similar, and that helps a lot. And it sounds like VW has not gotten to that state yet, which is a big problem. <laughs> you need to have that sort of finalized before you can even write the code and make sure that that's going to work on the platform. And then we get to money. According to VW CFO Arno Antlitz, the Karyad Group makes 2.5 billion euros available each year. I think that's slightly awkwardly true translated, I think what that means is it's costing two and a half billion euros per year to operate this particular arm. That is not a small expense. Due to the high development costs, it is therefore important for the VW group that all group brands use the operating system in the future. Of course, that just means they have to amortize this incredible cost, right? 2.5 billion euros per year for, let's say, four years, that's 10 billion euros. They have to amortize that over all of the cars that they are producing in the whole group in order to make back the money that they're spending to do this. And finally, the development of its own software represents a risk for VW and is currently characterized by many problems. However, success in this area would give the group a major advantage over other automakers. With regard to electromobility, however, Volkswagen is strongly positioned and successful. Therefore, der Aktionär is confident in the long term. So that's an interesting last paragraph. They're like, they've got risks, but they're doing awesome and they're gonna do great. Uh, <laughs> I tend to disagree from the content of that article. Uh, it seems like a little bit of a fluff ending where they're like, yeah, everything's going fantastic and it's gonna work. So anyway, you can see Volkswagen is up against the wall here. I mean, Herbert Dies is doing the best he can, but putting 5,000 people on a project like this seems like a terrible idea. This seems like a skunk work kind of thing. What you wanna do is, is set the absolute top-notch engineers, like 30 or 40 of these people, set them off, give them all the money they want and, and don't have any oversight of them and say, in one year, we expect a hardware platform to be specified and to have the software written at least at an MVP level. So that's the kind of stuff that we should be looking at. By the way, it sounds like the tree people are here. Sorry about that. I tried to get this done fast enough. But anyway, that's the whole problem that's going on here. They're going about this completely the wrong way. It's a really good goal but I think that the, the problem is that they're thinking about this kind of on a, a governmental bureaucratic level. It's like, let's throw 5,000 people at this problem and spend billions of euros. That's not the way that they should be going about doing this. So this, you know, kudos for VW for trying, but I don't think this is gonna go very well. It's gonna be delayed at the very least, and it might actually fail in the process, so we will see. 
All right, so turning from that to Beijing, where we're moving from kind of unsuccessful things to more successful things, the first driverless taxis are being put on the roads in Beijing. That's a major accomplishment. This is being done by Baidu, which is the search engine. It's kind of the equivalent of Google in China, and they're collaborating with Pony.ai, which interestingly is a Chinese company, but based out of Fremont, California. Mm, interesting stuff here. Anyway, it, they're replicating the model of Google and Waymo. So, you know, Google the search engine and Waymo they're partnered with is the actual company that's doing the full self-driving in Phoenix, for example. So it's the same basic idea and it looks, the article is very, very thin. Again, I'll put a link to it in the description, but it doesn't really go into the engineering details about these cars, but you can see big LiDAR things on top of the cars. So it's pretty obvious that what they've got is the same basic idea as Waymo and Cruise, which is that they've got a LiDAR system, they map everything out in HD. There's a 23 three square mile part of Beijing that is mapped out and that they're allowed to drive in. And apparently that gives them access to 300,000 people for test rides and everything. So that's very, very cool. So I'm gonna read a couple of quotes from this article and then talk a little bit more about it. For the first time in China, people will be able to get a taxi ride without anyone behind the wheel. Baidu, an autonomous driving startup Pony.ai, announced Thursday that they had won the country's first permits to provide robo-taxi ride-hailing services to the public. The permits do not require an operator to sit in the driver's seat. With a really big caveat here that the employee has to sit in the passenger seat. So they're not in the driver's seat, but they're right next to the driver's seat in case they have to take over. I think that's honestly a little bit better than the way that like Waymo does it with the remote driver having to get the car out of problem situations. It seems like it might be better to do it with live employees, although obviously more expensive because it's a one-to-one -one sort of thing. Continuing on, the services were introduced in Beijing on Thursday and allow passengers to call for taxis using each company's respective apps during daylight hours. For now, each company will be restricted to a designated area of 23 square miles, and they will have to keep an operator in the front passenger seat, as I said, to take over in case of emergencies. Currently, the programs are being offered for free to riders. Baidu is best known for its search engine, again, like Google, but it also owns the largest autonomous driving fleet in China. It said it would start off with 10 vehicles under the program and add 30 more later. Pony.ai, a fast-growing startup that was founded by former Baidu engineers in Fremont, California, again, kind of interesting that they're in Fremont, but it is the Bay Area, anyway, said that as many as 300,000 residents in Beijing would be able to try out the experience. China has become an important testing ground for autonomous vehicles, with a small pool of ambitious companies routinely notching new records on various fronts, such as removing the safety driver, opening up their services publicly, or operating on public roads, and the number of miles their vehicles have been tested. There's more details in the full article if you want to read it, but again, it's a pretty thin article. It really doesn't <laughs> go into much detail about what's going on. But it's really interesting. What this indicates to me, and I unfortunately don't know the Chinese market as well, it's just really hard because number one, it's really far away, and number two, it's very, very insulated, so it's difficult to get a lot of accurate news out of there. But anyway, Anyway, it looks like we've got, you know, kind of the basic startup sort of deal where there's a gold rush. There's a bunch of companies that are doing their best to try to get autonomous driving up and running and get robo taxis up and running as fast as possible because, like I said, it's a gold rush. Whoever gets there first is going to be making a lot of money. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. I mean, there's, there's no two ways about it. And again, Tesla right now is not in China doing full self-driving beta. Of course, they do have some regular full self-driving attributes that are in their cars, but one would be highly surprised if they were not actively researching this in China right now. Uh, you know, I've, I hear Elon saying that they're going to roll out full self-driving in Europe by the end of the year uh, at a beta level, assuming regulatory approval. But honestly, at this point, I would say if they wanted to be as competitive as possible, they should actually be looking at China. There's a big problem with China, of course, because the traffic patterns, everything is very, very different in China. Going from the United States to Canada was a relatively small step, although still a big one because all the road signs and uh, mile per hour goes to kilometer per hour, all of that kind of stuff changes. But anyway, that was, a, you know, it was a big step, but not that big of a step. Going to Europe will be a bigger step, but then going to places like China, which have extremely different road rules and everything, is going to be a very large step. So I don't know how far along they are, but Tesla would be 
just dumb. <laughs> and Elon Musk is not dumb. They would be dumb if they weren't really, really working on gathering data and trying to make sure that they are ready to roll into China as quickly as they are allowed to. Clearly, the Chinese regulatory system is much more lenient than the EU is also. So I hate to say this to the Euro European viewers because, you know, I, I like you guys, but if, if Tesla is smart, they would devote all of their resources to moving to China next and forget about the EU. I think it's just a smart thing to do because the EU is not nearly as competitive right now and there's a lot more regulation. So they're just going to get slowed down by all of that. And China, they could actually take a big piece of a huge market. So I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I have a feeling that Tesla is at least thinking about these options. Alrighty, so a quick recap. No real news out of Tesla recently, which indicates to me that they're working on something big in the background and that the next software revision in the full self-driving beta stack is going to be the big one that we've been waiting for. So that's actually rather exciting news. Hopefully it will come rather soon. As far as VW is concerned, it doesn't really look that good. <laughs> Sounds like they're approaching this completely the wrong way. They have the right goal, but they're going about it completely the wrong way. And as for China, it sounds like that. A bit of, it's a bit of a free-for-all, but there are a lot of people with a lot of money who are pouring a lot of time and effort and money into trying to get full self-driving working. And it seems like the regulatory bodies in China are pretty amenable to this whole process. But of course, in China, the success stories that I've seen are the same sort of model as like Waymo and Cruise, which is LiDAR basically driving the thing down a railroad track of high definition maps, not like what Tesla is doing. So again, locally, I would expect within little cities that these Chinese companies will be very, very successful, but it's going to be companies like Tesla that are trying to do a generalized solution that will ultimately win the big prize if they can get it all working. So at any rate, it's going to be a really interesting next eight months or so, the rest of 2022 and into 2023, to see how all of this stuff goes. I, for one, am really looking forward to seeing what happens with this competition. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it, speaking of AI algorithms, and also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. Thank you. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. In fact, Claudia, my German office, as I joke sometimes, <laughs> sent me the actual article about VW, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Anyway, if you want to join the team and join the discussion, definitely check out the link in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store link is in the description we have tesla bot t-shirts the tesla meme t-shirt success is a possible outcome 4680 battery cells all of that stuff is on t-shirts mugs tumblers and on and on so check it out and for those of you interested in investing check out weeble an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks and now cryptocurrencies like bitcoin dogecoin and others open an account and get a free stock valued at up to 200 dollars and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to 1600 dollars Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget, we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.